Hello and welcome back. So today in the studio, I'm finally going to do the project I've been hinting about. Um, this new series that I just started, uh, this is just really the, the second full episode. So if you don't know anything about ice resin, um, you sh should really go back and watch the first episode. That one's, you know, not as much fun as this one's going to be, um, because, but it's going into the basics about what ice resin is, which is a product that I'm going to be using in this series. And it goes through with what it is, how to mix it, and um, just basic making resin paper. So go back and watch that um, first episode, and then there's just a little few minute uh, follow up to that uh, with the reveal of, of the first pour from the first video. So um, if you've already watched it, great. So I'm happy that you liked it enough to want to join me again. So today what I wanted to do is actually uh, do a tutorial on how to make these resin paper leaves and then we're going to turn them into a bookmark. Um, the whole goal of this series is to try to um, marry the, my love of making jewelry and my newfound love of uh, paper craft and junk journaling and uh, altered books and that sort of thing and find ways that I can put the two together in my projects. So the first one is going to be this um, cute little bookmark. So uh, I didn't come up with the leaf idea on my own. The inventor of ice resin is uh, Susan Leonard Kasmer, and this was the first book uh, that I got from her, and I didn't even know at the time that I bought this that she was the inventor of ice resin. Um, but she chose how to make the paper leaves in, in this book. And then since then, I've actually read another uh, more recent book and watched a little video uh, where she made the paper leaves. So I always, you know, like to follow a recipe the first time, the way that the um, person wrote it. Um, but then sometimes I find like little uh, things that I find easier for me. Maybe it didn't come out uh, the way that she made it look so easy in her video. Uh, but it's sort of like me watching a, a video of somebody frosting a cake. Mine does not look like that, and it was much messier for me to do it. So um, I'm going to start from the beginning and uh, kind of take you through tools and things that you might have or might not have. Um, I like to do this as if you're just brand new to it, and that way, if you're just starting out and don't have a lot of tools, I'll try to show you, you know, what you absolutely need and what you can get by with. So to start for this bookmark, um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to make some leaves. And when she, Susan did her video, she um, sells some pre-made wires on hers. She has a ball at both ends, and I'm going to show you how to draw a ball on a wire. If you do make jewelry and you haven't, um, you know, gotten into soldering or anything like that and don't know how to do that, this will be a game changer for you because you can make your own ear wires and head pins and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to show you the way that she did it, and then um, you don't have to do that part. You can still do this project if you don't want to, you know, deal with the flame or anything like that. So basically you're going to start out with um, some dead soft wire. I'm going to use copper in this case and it's 22 gauges, the one that I chose to use. I don't even remember what she used in hers, but um, this one is just going to be easy to shape the way that you want it. So I'm just going to cut a length of it and I'm not even going to measure it. Just make it big enough for the size of leaf that I think I want. And then um, you're going to need a torch. Now, I know that can be intimidating, and that's why I like to actually do this video and show you, because seeing it in a book or something like that, it, it might still be intimidating if you've never used one, and it's really not, um, it's not difficult at all, it's not scary, so I want to actually show you as if you've never used one before. Now, these craft sheets that I have, these are heat resistant, but I normally go ahead and and use something else. Um, you don't have to have a whole soldering kit set up uh, to do this, but you do want to protect your surface because you're gonna be working with hot metal and if the ball drops off of your wire, it's gonna burn your tabletop or it, it might still burn uh, your craft sheet. So I just use a plain cookie sheet and you can get these uh, butane torches anywhere that you, 
Bed Bath & Beyond has them for creme brulee. So it's, that's all it is, really. And this is all I use. I don't use the big um, tank system or anything. I just use these for my soldering. So this is a smaller version. This is a newer one that I have. I think I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. So if you've never used one before, it, they're pretty simple. On this side, there is a, a minus and a plus, if you can see that. And that is just... Uh, controlling the amount of butane that's coming out of your torch. So when you buy this, you have to fill it first, okay? So you're gonna put it all the way to the minus so that nothing's coming out. And then you can get your butane fuel. It's the same stuff you would fill, refill a lighter. You know, if you have a barbecue lighter or a Zippo lighter or something, this is what you use. So mine's just about empty, but we'll pretend. Um, on the bottom of the torch is a little gold, um, kind of a little hole. And when you take your lid off of your can, you'll see that there is a, uh, a little needle that's gonna fit over that. So once you have that on the minus, so nothing's coming out, you're just gonna hold it straight up and down on that little receiving end there, and then just push, and that butane's gonna go into your tank in just a few seconds, and you'll have it in there. So you don't need to do it too long. You can always add more later. Okay, so I have, I have some in here. And then the other little buttons on here, in order to get the flame started, there is this little trigger and then a button. So first thing I need to do is I need to move it off of the minus because I need some fuel to go in there. So I'm gonna do it about halfway just to start. And then you're gonna just click that little bottom one and then push and there's your flame. This button here, if you push it to the side, it lets you let go of this button and you're you can, you'll still have a flame. So this is nice because this bottom is flat and you'll have just a room here to be able to work without having to hold your torch. And then to turn it off, you're just gonna click that side button again. Okay, so I wanna make sure I have everything I need when I get started. When you get, make these, you probably wanna make a whole bunch of them just to have on hand. <clears throat> so I'm just doing one now just for the sake of time. You want to have a little um, something with water because you're going to need to quench the, um, it's going to be hot metal so you're going to quench it as soon as you're done. You'll hear a little sizzle kind of a snap kind of sound. And where are my tweezers? So this is something else that you need. Now most tweezers um, are you push, you push, squeeze them to hold them together. These are called cross lock tweezers and these will hold your item without you having to squeeze. So you actually squeeze it together to, to release it. So these are handy because you're just not, you're not squeezing something, you're just holding it there. So that's kind of a nice thing to have. Now, if you don't have that, some people might have um, even just a basic jewelry kit. So there are tweezers in here that you can use too. It's just that, you know, these are the kind that you're gonna have to hold your wire and not open it up, you know, each one that you're doing, but these will work. So if you have no jewelry tools at all, but you wanna start, you're thinking it might be fun, this is a handy little kit that you can get. You can get these at Walmart, at Michaels. Um, you can get them online, I'm sure. But this is just your basic, basic kit, but it has everything that you would need. It has um, your little wire cutters, and then it has uh, round nose pliers that you're gonna use for everything. And then it has, um, these are like a second hand or to flatten things, just to flatten those uh, pliers. And then these are the other ones that I use the most. These two, just some round nose pliers. They're flat on the inside and rounded on the outside. Um, in addition to that, you'll get a little bead reamer usually that's just like a little sanding thing it's to it's to make the hole of a bead bigger if you need it but um it's basically kind of like a sandpaper feel and then your tweezers with the little scoop on the end which is handy for beads so if you are just starting out this is kind of a handy little kit to get if you don't and you just want to buy your tools one at a time when you kind of see what you need you can get a better quality tool maybe um and just you know buy them as you need them so to get going here, we're going to go ahead and draw a bead. Now, what you want to do is get your flame going here. Okay, and then you can adjust it to the side here if you want. That's probably actually good. Now, you'll see the blue part of the flame ends, and then there's still more flame out here. You want it 
put your wire right at the tip of that blue flame and you can kind of see it's changing color there and just like that it will draw a bead up if you can see that and then you're going to quench it okay now on this one i'll go ahead and do a bead on the other end because that's what she did and some of them i haven't done any bead at all we're going to do it three ways so that way you if you don't want to do this you don't have to okay so we're done with that we'll put that aside don't need my tray anymore So we have our wire, it's it's not hot anymore because I dipped it in the water and just quenched it. That's what that little snap sound you heard. So you'll notice that you have what they call fire, uh, fire scale on the end. It's kind of discolored the end of, your, of the ball, but I still have it shiny in here. If you're gonna do something rustic or maybe you're gonna put this in liver of sulfur to, to age the whole thing, then you can just leave it you know whatever you want to do if you want to polish it back you can either do that with little polishing pads um i'll show you what these are in a little bit but some fine steel wool or something or you can just leave that leave it like that i'm going to show you what the differences are so i can leave it or if i the next step if you're like wanting to really get into jewelry making you can put this in a pickle and it will clean all that off and what a pickle is is a little chemical that you mix with water and you put it in it usually warm water works best um i have like a little crock pot thing i i keep going all the time but you put it in it and it just cleans all that fire scale off so you see this is copper and it kind of has that pink tint to it but at least it's all you don't have that dark color anymore so you can do that or not and then on mine i went ahead and put them in my tumbler so this is the actual one um, before it was cleaned this one is in the pickle and then this one is after i put it in a tumbler so you don't have to do any of that but i thought if i'm going to be showing you how to do different things and you want to maybe step it up a notch maybe you do already work on a little bit of jewelry i just want to show you the different things that you can do so that maybe it's not intimidating and you you decide if you want to you know take it a step further so the next step um, to making the leaf is i took my this is a, a steel block and it's uh, it's permanently mounted on this rubber you can actually you know replace this part there's just a little rubber holder this is just to absorb the sound i also put a leather sandbag under mine just because then it, it's really loud if you don't i'm in a kind of a big room that would echo a lot so i use this and uh, on her video she had had hammered these ends flat and hammered the wire she may have even used rectangular wire to start with but i'm using round wire so you're just going to take a little chasing hammer and one end's flat and one end's rounded it'll do kind of like a decorative um, hammered effect on it they do make decorative ones that you can change out the heads this screws off and you can swap the different heads out i've got a flat one kind of a a slow rounded one here and then one that has little lines and that just puts different texture in your work obviously this is for if you're going to work on jewelry a lot but i like to show the tools that are out there and so that you kind of know what they are so you're going to take your wire and i have my little ball made on the end and i'm just going to hammer that doesn't take that much you don't have to hit it hard um, when you use these kind of hammers you'll notice they have a big ball at the at the back side that's the part you grip and you don't want to have your finger here sometimes i do that because i forget but you just want to hold it at the end and let the weight of the hammer do its thing so it's really not a uh, not a lot of work so you just kind of let it fall just let it fall and what it's done is it's just flattened out that ball and it just made it kind of more um, decorative in a way okay so i do that first because it's easier to to flatten that out before i've made my leaf shape so then I'm going to take, you could just do this freehand, or if you have little pliers, you're just going to kind of make your little little bend. Some of them, when I did them, I took and I, I actually flattened this out first to make a nice point and then pull it back apart. So it's just kind of organic, whatever kind of leaf shape you want to do. So then I just kind of, that looks like a leaf, and then wrap one of the balls around. And you can just, this is soft enough wire, you can just do it with your fingers. 
if you like using tools like I do. These are nylon pliers, um, and they'll just hold things without scratching the metal, and you don't really have, you can use even metal ones, it doesn't matter. And then you can just wrap that a little tighter if you want. So that's kind of just the little decorative part. We're gonna leave this part straight. Um, later on, we'll loop that around, and that'll be what you hang with. But when you're, we're gonna be using resin, it's nice to have that all flat. So next, you can leave it like this. I did this one and I just left this one round. I left it round and I didn't clean it or anything. So you can, you can stop there or you can make it a little more decorative. So if you're gonna do that, get your block back here again. Now I won't be able to talk while I hammer, but you're just gonna hammer it flat. Okay. And then you can use this decorative, this ball side. And I just like to go along and get all the edges. Now you'll see how it kind of made it bow up a little bit. You, when you're hammering, you're spreading that metal out. So it, it is gonna take a different shape. So you just flip over the other side and then do the same thing. like that and then just make sure it's pretty flat because we're going to be doing more to it okay so I had made a bunch already just trying them out and like I said after this part when you did the hammering on that little end ball it kind of actually polished it up a tiny bit because you were hitting metal on metal and so it kind of took some of that fire scale off anyway. You can clean it more or not, just leave it how you like it. And like I said, this one I put in my tumbler. Now, if you don't know what a tumbler is, it's just an easy way of polishing things and you're able to go do something else while it's in the, in the tumbler. I'll show you that real quick, just so you see what one is. Um, I won't show the whole machine part, but um, basically you have a, a machine part that this, this tum, this, container is going to sit in. So I just use, this has still shot in it and you buy it by the pound and you can buy it just in balls, but I like the ones that have different shapes, these long pointy ones, because that'll get in any kind of little nooks and crannies of your, whatever you're trying to polish. So I just have, I don't know, probably a quarter inch or so in the bottom of my, of my container here. And then you're going to put water maybe halfway and uh, just a drop of dish soap and then you'll throw all your little metal pieces in there and then you put this this uh, lid on and because there's going to be water in there you want you don't want it to come out so you just put that on and you put the top on there's a washer and then you screw that on so you imagine this has water, a drop of dish soap, and all your metal pieces. And then it's gonna go into a little machine and it's just gonna turn like that for hours. So when it comes out, you've had to do nothing but put it in there, you, you, you pull it out and it's nice and shiny. So if you're gonna do a lot of jewelry and, and metal work and stuff, then that's kind of a nice uh, uh, tool to have. So once we have our shape, now we're gonna uh, turn it into a, um, a little paper leaf. So uh, let's see, get a piece of tissue paper. So the way she did it, um, and I don't have some resin mixed up yet, so I guess I should do that real quick because it's supposed to actually sit for a bit. Uh, if you watched the first video, you saw how I did the resin. And um, let's see, let me get my... So basically all you need is a little medicine measuring cup and a popsicle stick to do the stir. And I'm just gonna do a black mark at the quarter and at the half. So you mix it equal parts. And I'm not going to go into great detail about this because I did all of that in the first video. So I'm just gonna get some going here. Now you can buy these, like I said in the first video, in just 
kind of a single use plunger thing. So if you're just starting out, that might be the easiest thing. Um, and again, this one's really thick. So you wanna squeeze and kind of stop and see where it settles to and so you don't go over your, over your line. Now, every time you do this, you can only do one pour and then it has to sit overnight. So you end up, these kind of can take a while um, to get a project finished. So don't think you're gonna do all this in one day. You'll have to have to start it. And some things, most of the things I do need, you know, two or three pours. So some of them I've done up to a dozen pours for things. So uh, if you're gonna make something as a gift for somebody or something like that, you just need to be aware that these are projects that aren't done in one day. At least not the way I work. Okay, I think that's good. So I'm gonna kind of rush this along just so you don't have to sit here and, and wait. But normally you, you're gonna sit here and stir this for two full minutes to let its whole chemical thing get going. But I'm gonna cheat it a little bit here. You do wanna make sure the sides are all scraped in the bottom and get it going. And then it's gonna make bubbles when you do this, when you mix it up. So you're supposed to let it sit for five minutes and let it kind of start settling. For the paper, because I'm just gonna be putting it on paper, it's not as big an issue as if I were trying to fill a pen, oops, to fill a pendant. So we're just going to call that good. Okay, now I have my little leaf. As far as um, where to put these when you're finished, you can work right on this craft sheet with resin and, and everything will peel up and you can clean it off after. I've been using this one for quite a while, so I actually got a new fresh one that I'm going to use just for resin. If you don't have these or don't want to buy these because they're not cheap, um, there's other things you can do. I These are just a, a lid from one of my bead, bead storage containers. Um, you can use the, just anything flat that you can go put aside so that it doesn't get damaged. Um, and then I've just covered it with packing tape so that I don't ruin this lid. Um, you can see where I have resin on here. It'll peel off, but this way I can just peel the tape off when it gets too icky and start all over. So I use that as an option that's not too big. And then as I showed in the video yesterday, you can do the same thing with the cookie sheet. That way I have, I have more room to put things. So I've just covered a, a brand new cookie sheet in packing tape. And that way I don't ruin the cookie sheet and I don't ruin my project. So um, I, I can put it there. It's just once you make these things, you have to have a place to set them aside because it's gonna take eight to 10 hours for them to cure. So you're gonna put them aside, come back the next day, and you'll have, you know, ready for the next step. So I've done some ahead to show you, but I wanted to actually do one in front of you because I kind of changed how her video, how she did it in her video. She didn't wear gloves or anything, and you don't have to. You can clean up with um, rubbing alcohol. Uh, yesterday I wore gloves. When I do the paper, it's really messy, so I, I went ahead and wore gloves. But today, the way I'm going to show you, I did it with a little paintbrush, and I did it kind of a little neater, I think. So I, I'm just going to do it without gloves myself here. So I, I'm using this little word paper. You can use any kind of tissue paper. This is just what I had. So if I want, I can cut out an actual you know, little word, like there's perfect, that might be cute. So I'm gonna cut that little spot out. Of the tissue. Now when she did it, she just actually put the resin on this paper and then laid the paper on top of the leaf and let gravity do its work. That's how simple that was. Mine didn't all turn out that great when I did that because some of them um, didn't need here all the way around. So I'd have like a part lifted up and I don't have that sample to show you because I already had fixed it. Um, but I, I decided that I needed something that would maybe stick it down a little bit better. And then also I decided kind of maybe I'd start with the word make this be my top and the other side be my bottom. So what I did is 
because I had the paper sealer out um, from yesterday's video, I went ahead and I just used it like glue. The resin itself is like glue, but like I said, in my case, it didn't stick down and it may be because my leaf metal frame wasn't totally flat or like you saw that tissue paper I pulled out, I have creases in it. It's been folded and so it wasn't perfectly flat. I guess you could iron it first, but to me, this was just a more foolproof way of making it work. So I just took my paper sealer, you can use glue, like I said, and then I'm just gonna stick it where I want on that word. Oops. And this is gonna dry the glue of it very quickly. So I just, I just wanna make sure that it's stuck down before I put the resin on it. So you can kind of see that metal through there already. So you can go ahead now and resin it and just leave it like that, or you can cut this away. So I've done it both ways. It's kind of your whatever your preference is. I'm gonna, this one I did yesterday and it's actually got two coats on it already and I haven't cut it out, but I'm gonna show you just with my fussy cut scissors here. Um, you just, you can just go follow around that wire. Now this one has two coats of resin on it. I probably would have cut this off after just the first coat because the more coats you put on it, the thicker it's going to get. And I don't know if I want to ruin the scissors. So you can, these are metal shears. They'll cut metal. So this is going to be like butter if I use these. So, you, you know, it's what you have. Either one will work. I just kind of wanted to have a little demo so you could see what it would be like to cut two layers of resin. So basically you would cut that out and there's your tissue paper leaf, okay? So that's one way to do it. Um, or like I said, you could, you could cut it out before you put any resin on it. So one little tip that I came up with um, just playing around here was I took a file you could use just a, a nail emery board and I kind of just because it's tissue paper it's really easy I just kind of went around the edge of my metal and then it just comes away perfectly so to me I thought that was that was a pretty easy trick to get these all prepared Okay, so that's all ready to go. And I just like that. You don't have to worry about trying to cut anything afterwards. I have a little tiny piece there that I wanna get that off because I don't really wanna put that resin up in, in where that wire is wrapped around. Okay, so that's all ready. So now what I would do is just get a whole bunch of these ready and my little brush that I need to dry off. And we're gonna pretend this has been sitting for five minutes. Now you can kind of see where the bubbles are coming to the top, they're kind of foamy. So you can kind of pop pop those. You can put it under a lamp uh, for the heat and it'll kind of help pop them too. But we're just doing paper, so it's really not gonna be a big deal. So I would just take that with my little paintbrush. To me, this was less messy than painting uh, you know, doing the paper and then putting that sloppy piece of paper on top. So you just do that, do a bunch of them. Now, when I did it, um, I just did one side at a time um, because when you lay this on something, if you have it on both sides, it's going to puddle to one to the low spot and you're going to end up with a blob there. So I found it a little tidier to do it this way and just plan on doing two pours. So I'll put that aside on my little sheet there. And um, if that happens, you can fix um, resin mistakes. So that's kind of the nice thing, but I wanted to, I don't know if this will show up, but there's kind of a little blob on the edge of this metal. So if I wanted to, I could get rid of that. I don't really need to. Actually, there's a whole little gap there where it didn't stick. So that's actually good for you to see. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually a gap where the resin didn't go all the way. So I could 
try to smush that in there. You know, maybe even use my pliers or something to seal that up. You know, when you're doing something like this, you're going to be doing so many leaves. I don't know that anybody's going to look that closely at them. But if you're a perfectionist, like I know I can be sometimes, then you might, you know, you want it to be, especially if you're going to sell something, right? So I do sell things sometimes. So I would want it to be as perfect as possible. So you could just go back over and fix any little boo-boos like that. I'm just going to cover the whole thing again. So every time you do this, you hope that that's your last pour. But sometimes what will happen is I'll get some on the other side and then I have to fix that side. And then you flip it over and you have to fix the other side. So it could be like a little vicious circle. Now this one um, also had a big blob on it. And I wanted to show this so that you could see you can sand things off and fix them. So I took just, um, this is like 80 grit sandpaper and I just take like a little tiny piece. You could use emery board again, like I said, and you would just, you know, sand down the little high spot. From there, you can use a, a finer grade. I go up to like 2000 grit, which you can find in like automotive areas um, to get it as smooth as possible. And then these are little um, polishing pads. I'll put a link to um, Rio Grande. That's where I buy all of my metals. You don't have to buy these big spools like I do. You can buy it by the foot or by weight. Um, so you can buy just as much as you want to use. And it's just um, really good quality uh, metals. So I, I buy all of my metals from Rio Grande. But they have these cleaning po pro polish pads. They have a little bit of grit to them. So they're kind of a next step. They're kind of my second to the last step when I'm polishing something. But they will take that little, uh, where you sand it, it's gonna be kind of uh, obscure, like looking through obscure glass. So the more that you use this polish, it's gonna even kind of start to shine it up again so that it's clear again. So you have to do that for quite a bit. And then once these turn black from tarnish and stuff from doing metal, you have to toss them. So you, you work with it until it's dirty. Um, then the next step is this actually has polish in it. It's a sunshine polishing cloth, also from Rio Grande. And then you can, you can get it back up to, I'm not going to take the time to do it here, but you can work it and keep, you know, polishing it up. The other option that you have, and because this one is so bad is what I would do, is I would sand down just the, the high spots that I need to, and then you just do another coat, and it's going to totally heal all of that. So that's the nice thing about this is if you get a scratch in something or it touches something else and got, or you didn't catch a bubble right away and it you had to pop it the next day, you can go back and it's just going to make that totally clear again. You can see that. So this one will have to cure also. So you just do that and set it there. So these will all be ready tomorrow. So this one did the same kind of thing. This one, what happened, I did a second coat on the top, but there a little bit got on the back side. I don't even really feel like I want to sand that. I'm just going to do a whole other coat on this side. Now I've been touching this as you can see, and I was sanding over it. So what you want to do is anything that's on here, if I put resin on it, it's going to be there forever. So if I had a piece of lint or a fingerprint or anything, I've, you know, it's, it, you're going to see it later because this resin kind of magnifies whatever it covers. So I use these little alcohol prep pads and I just clean off any oils from my hand, fingerprints, whatever. And that dries pretty much immediately. So let's see which side it was this side. So then I can just go and fill in my, even that out. Now the goal would be don't get any on the underside. Otherwise I'm going to have the same problem and have to flip it over again. And that's what happens when you don't have your pro project sitting uh, very flat. If it's not perfectly flat, that low, everything's going to puddle to that low spot. So it, that's just one more little, little challenge to overcome. So if I wanted this to be perfect, I probably would have to do a few more pour, uh, pours because I didn't sand that down lower. 
but this was for the sake of showing you how to fix mistakes. Okay, so we have some leaves, and I also wanted to show quickly that you can do different shapes too. So I've done these, these are already finished. I've done a coat on each side. And this does have, I know it looks like a little magnifying glass, but it actually does have tissue paper. This was the white tissue paper, just the plain white that I showed yesterday that it makes it just look like clear glass. And I just love that. So you could actually use colored tissue paper. You could uh, use dyes and tints in your resin to make them a color. Um, this one was a tea bag. So it just kind of has that little antique color to it. And then I've gotten some more here. I even did a little heart shape just to try, I haven't, I haven't filled that yet, but um, just to try doing the same technique. This one here, I did another little shape. This is going to be a pendant. I just think it's really delicate, and I just, you know, I just wrapped it around, actually. This is like a, a mandrel to make jump rings. You don't have to have tools like this. You can use a pen, um, just different size pens. I happen to have this, so I just started on the big one, and then I twisted, and then I went up to the next smallest one, and I kind of just did graduated sizes. And then I left the top one open because I'm going to make this into a necklace, but I went ahead and, and filled these. And these were with uh, white tissue paper again, too, so they just look like clear glass. So that's a sneak peek of a future thing. So um, the leaves, I did some with the ball and some without the ball. Um, just like these round ones I did without. And the reason being is it, you might not want to do those balls at all. You might not want to go get a torch. You might want to just leave it round and not pound it. You can do that. You can just leave it the plain wire, no decorative balls on it. Um, so I've done some both ways so you can see. The other thing is if you have the one with the ball on it, depending on what size chain you're going to use, that ball might not fit through the link. So then you need to make a jump ring to attach it. And I'll show that too, because that's that's what happened with my bookmark. So let's see, where did my bookmark go? So on this one, I just did a little bit of chain. This one's done in copper. So I just used a little bit of copper chain. So you can either go buy some new chain, or maybe you have a necklace you've taken apart that you just want to recycle, you, you know, because it doesn't take very much, or a little bit of leftover. If you do make jewelry, you might have a little scrap somewhere. And then I just did different size leaves on it, and I put one in each um, different alternating links. So to make this, um, let's get these things out of the way, these wet things. Oops, this is why a tray is good. Oops. I'll put them on this little tray. That way nothing gets damaged. Okay. Let's set that aside. So to make the bookmark, I'm gonna use this again. Get that out of the way. So for the for the actual bookmark part. Yeah, that's a much uh, heavier gauge wire. So if you've never worked with wire before, it comes in what's called gauges, and the higher the number, the tinier the wire. So this is 22 gauge, this is 16 gauge, which you can see is much thicker, okay? So I want that because I want it to be um, sturdy and hold up as a bookmark. So to make mine, I just cut a length of wire, where's my cutters, we'll call that good, and then I started at one end and needle nose pliers, which are in that little kit, are really the perfect thing, and I just made one little loop, that's what I'm going to hook my chain to, okay, and then to actually get the hook part that hooks over the book, I actually just went and took an actual book, And just put the tail end in there and then I just kind of bent it around to make that that hook so it can be however long you want it to be we'll just call that good and then on the inside you can open your book and you know that's kind of a mess so you can have it be straight this is what these are good for nylon these are for straightening wire 
You can have a slight curve in it. Just whatever freehand thing that you like. And then on mine, I actually made a little, let's straighten that out a little bit more. Okay, that looks okay. And then I took my little, and I just went and made a little scroll the other way. You can get real fancy with this if you want. This is just for the sake of, of time here. And you can take your flat ones and kind of hold, just use them to hold that to bend it around. I'm not too worried with this one about making little um, scratches in my metal, which these will do, because I'm going to hammer that just for fun. Okay, so you can make it, like I said, as straight or curvy as you want. Just get the shape for the bookmark. And then this is where this is going to come in again. So it'll be loud. I won't do this whole thing because... It's going to be loud. I just want to show you how how the bend is going to work when you're working with this heavy gauge of a wire. So you would just, you know, hammer it out. As you work on this, it's going to do what we call work hardening. So my wire was pretty flexible at the beginning, but you're going to see it's going to get very brittle and hard. Okay, you can kind of see how it curved. That's why I wanted to go ahead and do that so you can see how that works. But it's already stiffening up compared to what the wire was at the beginning. So the more you do that, um, the more uh, hard it's going to get, which is a good thing for this. You just want to watch and not go too far. If you go too far, it's going to get brittle and then it'll break. So you don't want to do that. So you can use then use your decorative side. I won't do this whole thing, but you get the idea. So once you've done that, you've kind of gotten rid of or covered up any little uh, accidental little uh, tool marks that you didn't want and it just looks decorative. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. And again, you can age that, you know, if you want before you uh, do anything else to it. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with liver of sulfur and I didn't mix any up here, but um, liver of sulfur is what you'd use to uh, darken the metal. And then a lot of times you'll see you'll, it'll polish back and then the dark just stays in the little cracks. So you could do that with this. Um, it, Liver of sulfur is a little chemical you mix with the warm water and it smells like rotten eggs. It's horrible. But over time, once it, it's clear again, it kind of turns yellow when you do that, like a bright yellow. Um, once the color has gone and it doesn't smell anymore, it's neutralized. You can also neutralize it with baking soda if you want to do that right away. But um, after that, you can get rid of it. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a smelly thing. So have a lid if you're going to just let it sit. Um, but anyway, that 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 I'm not going to do that to this one. But if you're going to do that and to age all of these things, if you want that dark kind of rustic thing, you need to do that before you put the resin and paper on it. Do that to the metal ahead of time, and then then you can go back and and I may do that for one and then show you what that looks like. But for this one, I didn't. I just I did everything polished for this one. I didn't um, because I didn't heat this up at all. I didn't have any of that dark fire scale on there. So I didn't have to put this in the tumbler or polish it up or anything. I just kind of left it how it is naturally. And this will age, it's copper. It's gonna turn, you know, like a, looking like a penny um, over time anyway. So you don't really have to do that, um, the antiquing to it if you don't want. So you take your chain then, and I just, um, we'll do it on this one just to see. I just took my little, these little pliers, and then you kind of need to open up that uh, that little hook so you can put the chain on it. And then I just used, um, I buy this in bulk too from Rio Grande or whoever. So I just cut a section of chain off and then just hooked it on here and then put this back. Now, if you haven't done jewelry before, this is kind of how, you, it's the same uh, procedure opening and closing this as if you're doing a jump ring. And I'll kind of show you that. I'll maybe make a jump ring here from scratch. So I would have, just cut that off wherever. And then take some of my leaves. Oh, this one I already put a jump ring on so we can show that. 
So these, because I had this ball on here, like let's say this had, where's the one with paper on it? Like this one, this one's actually done in bronze, but we're gonna show. So that little ball won't fit through my hole. So I would either have to use one that I didn't put a ball on, I could feed that right through there um, and then make my loop. So if I were to do that, what I would do is take my needle nose and I'm just going to, I always kind of go about here, however big you want the, um, the circle to be. I just kind of fold that back and then I go and fold it back on itself. So it's like a head on a neck and that just makes everything kind of look nice and straight and lined up and sit nice and straight. So you would, you would do that and then you could just put it right onto your chain wherever you want. And then you would hold this with your pliers and then wrap this around. I'm not going to do this because you would just wrap that around and then trim off the excess. I'm not going to do this because this is not the design I wanted for this. If you want to use one that has the ball on it, you need to make a jump ring. So you can do a jump ring. You can make a jump ring with just these. Um, let's see where my little wire, other wire go. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use 20 gauge for my jump rings. It's a little bit bigger than the 22 gauge that I did for this. Um, it's a jump ring, so you want it to be big and sturdy enough uh, that it will hold, it will hold its shape if someone were to tug on it. Now, normally, if you're gonna make a whole bunch of these, you would make like a coil, and then these are good um, pliers for that. You can see there's different sizes. There's like six different sizes here, and you would put, pick the size. Let's see where I was kind of at here. And you can just go around and around. These are straight, so they're not, they're not tapered. So each one of these would be the same size. And see, I just made like a little spring looking thing. And then you would just cut them apart. But like I said, if you don't have to have those stepped, those stepped ones. So see, I cut one and now I have a jump ring. Now, I could have done just one at a time with this. These are tapered, so if I wrapped around and around and around, they would all be a little bit different size. But for this project, that wouldn't even matter. You can have them be different sizes. Nobody's gonna ever see that. When you open and close a jump ring, you don't want to go like this because you're gonna never have a circle again. I'm gonna take, like a, this is kind of like my second hand, so I'm gonna hold it. And I'm gonna go like this way, back and forth. So I'm keeping my circle, I'm just opening it up. And then you could take your already closed ring, put it on there, and then add it to your chain. Nice thing about this, if you use jump rings instead of wiring it right to there, say your leaf got damaged and you need to replace it or something, you'd have to just cut it off. If you have jump rings, you can change things and remove them, add things or whatever. So that's just adding one. Now you can do this and put little beads on there, and, you know, just a couple of leaves and more beads. You could make this longer if you wanted your, you know, if you wanted it to hang longer down the spine of your book. Anything you want, anything you can imagine. So um, that's the basics, making leaves. Like I said, make different shapes. You can add, I could add some of these other little shapes to it too. You know, if I wanted it to be a heart at the end. Um, but I hope that was, um, I hope you learned something and that you had fun and enjoyed this one. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any future um, episodes, but I'll see what I'm going to come up with next time. I have something up my sleeve. So um, in the meantime, have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.